Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. My prompt word for my creative year is storm. Um, I have to say, I wasn't really excited about the word storm. I'm not going to lie. I didn't feel like I had a lot of room to be creative with it until I started playing around with the idea. And I played around with it a lot because I really wasn't sure. I'm a doodler not necessarily an art journalist like many of you who are watching this. And I think some of you are longtime doodlers. Some of them, some of you are wannabe doodlers. So what I'm going to do is, is try to doodle things that are very simple for those of you who really want to learn how to doodle or are interested and never have been brave enough to try. This is a very inexpensive hobby. And what I'm going to do is show you my interpretation of the word storm. Now, I did look it up on the Nick on the internet about what the definition is and definition is divided into two things first it's the physical act of weather the second one is emotional storm like a turmoil and when you have a thunderstorm a lot of times it is a it's a turmoil um, hot meeting cold rain so on and so forth hail winds floods not all necessarily good things but I live in Texas so when it rains here I am ever so thankful um, I like to garden, so when it rains, I'm very happy. Not rain for four days, but <laughs> I'm happy when it rains. All right, so let me start you out by saying that if you want to be a doodler, you can use simple things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a paper mate ink, ink pen, and this is a simple spiral, um, a spiral book that costs $5 from Walmart. If you are not sure you want to be a doodler, or you're, you don't have the money to sink into yet what you think is another craft, then this is the way to go. Spend $5 for this, buy yourself a package of paper mate pens, you're done. Basically, that's it. Oh yeah, and uh, a pencil if you want a shade, okay? I do have a ruler, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler. I'm just going to divide this page. There's no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just dividing the page because it makes it easier for you guys to see with the reflection of the white. All right, so when I looked up the word storm, I know that when I think of storm, I think of big clouds, big dark clouds. So what I wanted to do was draw clouds. I want to see how to do clouds. So I went to Pinterest and I looked up hand-drawn clouds. And I got tons of great ideas. So I have some pulled up right now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what's on Pinterest. If you'd like to visit my Pinterest page for my creative year, I will put a link to it in the description box down below so that you can look at all the clouds that I'm going to show today so that you can use it to refresh your memory. All right, so the easiest cloud that I've seen, uh, let's see, I'm scrolling down and looking at these guys. So some of the easiest clouds I've seen are these. All right, that's it. That's a cloud. That's someone's interpretation. Sorry, that's someone's interpretation of what a cloud is. All right, well, this does not excite me because I need something more creative. This is good for beginners, but I want something that is a little more expressive. So then I found this one, and, the, and it gives you lots of clouds. So here's what they did. They took a straight line, and then they did this. Then they took a pen and they just drew lots of continuous little lines in the cloud shape. I think everybody can pretty much do this. This is a very simple elementary way to do clouds. It is a very effective way to do a cloud, but still this is not the kind of cloud that I want to convey that I want to convey the word storm when I do my doodle. I mean, it's a big fluffy cloud with a flat bottom on it. 
but it does not convey anger and turmoil like what I think of when I think of a storm. All right, so then they took other clouds like this. and did the same thing. They made different shapes, but the concept is still the same. They took lots of tiny lines and just drew it from one end, and they slanted them. All of them are, are they all slanted? Yep, they're all slanted. So that's all you do for this one. All right, so that's another basic cloud, doodle cloud. Then there are others that are like this. They took a little circle and then they just drew half circles around it. Then, let me make this picture bigger so I can see. Okay, then they took another circle and then just drew more circles around the circle. And you see that? And it's all it is, is this. Half circles on top of half circles on top of half circles. And they just kept expanding it by moving the center of the little circle around and you keep building on it. And then instead of having a whole circle, you can do a half circle. And then they kept building so that it would funnel down this direction like this. And what they did was they made it get larger and larger so that it sort of looked like this when it went out. Okay, so that's another form of a cloud. Um, when you think of a storm, you also think of rain, so they did little teardrops for the rain. Then they went inside the teardrops and just made another teardrop in the teardrops. Now with a paper mate pen, the point is a little thick and it's kind of hard to do that, but you get the gist of it. They did a little, a little teardrop inside the teardrop. They also did lightning. So when they drew lightning, they did this. You just follow the flow of the original one. Then they took another. Uh, they took a line. Whoops, drew a line, and went down the middle of this to make thunder. And then, of course, if you do this, you have all your little tiny raindrops. And that's what you get when you think of a storm, right? Okay. So then, there are other clouds that are, look a little more menacing. So this is how you do it. You take, you know, your basic shape like this and like this and this, and you do this. Then you can draw a line like this to make it look like there's another cloud pushing up this direction in your clouds. You can put little lines here to show that it has growing pains. But the main part is they took this and drew a cloud top of another cloud. And these are supposed to be the angry clouds. So then they took a lot of lines and crisscrossed them. So it makes it look like it's an angry sort of cloud. You know, some clouds are black, some are gray, some are like a smoky blue or colonial blue. Let's see, let's go this way. Um, let me go this way. Some clouds are white and fluffy. So then they just kept going this way and they made three or four clouds around the original cloud so that you had the higher cloud, and then you had the lower storm clouds. That's a way to draw a cloud when you think of a storm, the clouds for a storm. And then let me turn this this direction because it's harder to do it the other way. And then I just go back and crisscross these like they did in the picture. Yours won't look exactly like the photo, and if they do, bless your heart. Mine never look like the photo. I get inspiration, and then I go off on my own tangent. <laughs> right, so there's that one, and then you have, of course, the little marks here that they show that, you know, it's it's round. And then they do a couple little things like that, add a little doodad here, there, and yonder to make it look like it's got depth, 
one other way that you can show depth for this cloud because these guys are already angry clouds. So you take a pencil, and this is a number two pencil that you can buy at any discount store, Walmart, any place like that. And I just go around the edges of it with the pencil. You don't have to be heavy handed. Sometimes I am. Depends on what it is or what kind of day I've had. Some days I'm gripping this thing, my knuckles are turning white. And then there are other days it's loosey goosey. All right, so we have that. And then I'm gonna put a little bit on the bottom of the dark ones. I don't wanna overdo it because you've already got the dark from the crisscross. Just doing it on the outside edge. You're on a budget. Many of us have uh, makeup sponges. This is their cotton. This is the cotton pad for removing makeup. So what I did was I took it, I rolled it up, put my finger on the end, and then I swirled. I rubbed. You don't have to invest a lot of money in a new hobby. Try it out to see if you like it. What if you don't like it? Well, you haven't spent a lot of money, and I am quite sure that the majority of us who do mixed media already have what they need. Now see, doesn't that give it a lot more depth? And all it is, is just a cotton pad that's a makeup remover that I rolled up into a roll. Now, let me tell you the more expensive way is to buy the paper stubs. You can find those at um, any art supply store, craft store, places like Michael's, AC Moore, Hobby Lobby. You can even find them at Walmart. You can get them at Blix, Jerry's Arama, anywhere that does art usually has the paper stubs. And they look like, um, I think they're made out of newsprint that has no print on it, plain print, and it's rolled up very tightly into rolls and then they almost look like cigarettes, paper cigarettes. They have big, huge, fat ones that are, have a point on them. They have little small ones that have point and then they have the kind where the end is blunt you can find all kinds of things. But if you're the kind of person who likes to get their finger right down into it, instead of using the nub, if your pencil is really good with the graphite in it, you can take your finger and rub. So there's a cloud that has some depth to it. It does look a little dark and angry. Well, let's put the dark part on there. <laughs> All right, here's another cloud. It's the same version. Uh, they're all basically the same type clouds. You can do this, and then you can make swirls, and then connect your swirls to each other. And you just make a swirl and then follow it around over and over until you build on it to where it looks like it's a wave. And basically that's what a cloud is. You just keep building on it and building on it till you like it. And then you can put more. You just go around and keep filling it in. And the more you fill in, uh, you could get carried away or <laughs> you could give it depth. I usually end up getting carried away. All right, so there's that. And then I don't like that this has a lot of space in it. So I'm just going to keep going so that it fills it in. Looks more swirly. Put that there. And then this one, I'm not gonna show the swirl. I'm just gonna keep doing this so that I don't see the swirl. I really don't wanna see the swirl because it's tucked underneath this puffy part in the cloud. All right, so if you wanna show that, take your pencil and you, pre you do press down a little bit harder here and then a little less here. So you make it look like it's behind the other cloud. Then you do a little bit around here to give it some depth to differentiate this one from this one. And I'm not an expert on shading. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Those of you who do fine art and do shading need to teach the rest of us how to do this. All right, so I'm gonna take my little cotton makeup doodad. I'm not gonna to rub too hard on it. I want it to stay dark. This one, I'm just gonna give a little swirl, a little quickie, here, there, and yonder. But this one is not dark enough to suit me, 
So, and it's really hard to see in the camera. Um, how about, well, let me do this. Let me make it a little darker. I'll press down on the pencil a little harder. Take this. So, oh, it's hard to see in the camera here. See, it looks a little darker. Well, geez, didn't convey that on the camera. All right, so let me try again. All right. How's that? A little better. All right, so then you can shade as you go, or you could save it for the end. Your swirls do not have to connect because this could be the edge of the storm or the storm cloud or the forming of a new bump. You just keep building one on top of the other. Go down. And just follow the original line that you put down there. And then fill it in as much as you'd like for it to be filled in. You can make it look like a wave by going back over it and just building on top of what you just drawn. And then do more here like this. And there's part of another one right there at the back. This is a very easy thing to do. So then you would shade in wherever you need the shading. So that's the form of another cloud. So see what you have here are basic, simple things. You saw that I just drew them right there. And the only thing that really gave it a lot of depth was the fact that you just shaded a little bit with basic pencil. And look, there's no eraser. <laughs> so um, just basic pencil, pencil and pen and paper. All right. So that's some clouds. If you look on like I said before, my Pinterest page under my creative year, I will have about, I think I tagged like six or 10 different versions of doodle clouds so that you can see which one appeals to you the most. Out of all these that I've drawn, I like the one with the shading the most. I think shading on this one would change how I feel about this one. All right, so I want the bottom part to be really kind of dark and angry. I have a little bit up there. Mostly, I want it to be like that. So see, it gave it a little more depth. This one, if you do the bottom, that would look totally cool too. And it would look more angry. Okay, so this is our version of a doodle cloud. 